Welcome to part two of this tutorial. Now, if you guys haven't seen part one, I suggest you go do that first. In this section, we will be looking at the basics of Substance Painter. I'm gonna walk you guys through the most used features and tools that I use in Substance Painter, so you guys get familiar with the program and also see the potential of what you can do. If you guys already know how to use Substance Painter, you guys can move on to part three. So let's get into this tutorial. So you should have exported something like this, you'll have the OBJ, you'll have the textures here, these are the UVs that we organised in Clove 3D, and this is the MTL file. I've got an old folder here because I probably dabbled in this before, I can't remember, it's been so long. What you're going to do is drag the OBJ into Substance Painter, just drag it in, just want to double check, PBR metallic roughness, um, you can choose what resolution you want it to be. I guess we could make it this direct x um press okay here is the outfit in all its full glory here okay what we're gonna do and this is something i learned from my twitch streams from my um viewers is that we should bake the mesh maps before we start anything hmm, i feel like they have updated this why does this look so different now I guess the output size, we want to make it 2048. Keep it like that. Let's see if there's anything else. High poly, use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. Okay. They've definitely updated this since the last time I've checked, but I guess we'll just bake it just like this. It should be fine. So what this does is that it calculates or Substance Painter calculates how this model is being read. When you first import it in, it's, it's like not really doing that. So this is to ensure all the information that we got from Clove 3D is being read properly. A few moments later. Whew, it's finally done. Okay, it took some time. It took some time, maybe like less than five minutes. Probably less than five minutes, maybe about two minutes, okay? Return to painting mode. Now, if you guys have not really used Substance Painter before, if you guys have used Photoshop, it is very similar because a lot of the terminology or features are like the same as Photoshop. So I feel like you're going to get it. OK, so if you if you get Photoshop, you're going to get this. OK, so we've got the 3D side and we have the 2D side. Now, if I sift through all of these, you can see what we've separated, actually zoom out you guys can see they're all not textured right and I just totally forgot to turn on my pointer on so you guys can see better here it is sorry for that um, what we want to do let's see just because all my textures are down here now you guys can customize this interface how you want it to be I'm just gonna move this up just a little bit um, we've got a lot of fun textures here and I've actually downloaded some from Substance Source, I believe that's what it's called. They've got loads of presets on there. So make sure to check that out because there's quite a few you guys can use. I feel like, let's put on a fun one just so that you guys can see. You can just drag these textures on. These are all pre-made textures. You can play with colour, channel, height channel, roughness channel, metal, normal opacity and emission so this is where substance painter becomes really fun because you can totally just change the color of things they've got awesome presets already right so even if you're a total beginner at substance you can really have some fun there we go something crazy i don't know something like that and then the tiling the tiling you can have you can have it absolutely massive like that you can scale it down so I love playing in Substance Painter there's just so many possibilities you could do this is actually pretty fun I like this so yeah that is what you could do you could also if I was to actually turn this off with the eye icon you could actually create a fill layer here by pressing this paint bucket you could actually input your own textures and it could just be like your own graphic design textures or your own illustrations. You can drop it into the base color. I wonder if I have any here. 
I don't have any here, but let me see if I can find one just as an example. So I've designed my own pattern, which looks like this. And this was something that I drew before, drew it on my tablet and then I edited it and made it into a tileable pattern in Illustrator. So I could potentially drag this in. Um, let's see. It could be a texture. I just want to import it into this um, this project. They give you three options, either your current session, and then if you open a new session, it's not going to be there. When you save it to this project and you open this project again, it's going to be there. Or you save it to your assets and it will be in Substance Painter forever. So I'm going to put it into just this project, import. Well, I guess it's not a texture, is it? Well, it's in there now. These are all the normals you can see. But you can just, uh, oh, you can actually drag it onto this. But I'm going to drag it onto the base color here. There we go. Do you guys see that? You guys see that? And I've actually also created my own normals. I created this in Photoshop actually. So there's a lot of things you can do in Photoshop and then bring it into Substance Painter. This is a height map, which means anything that is white will be raised. Anything that is black or dark gray will be, it will be lowered, right? So um, height map or displacement map, whatever you like to call it. But what I can do is just drag these in. You know what, I'll just put them as texture for now. Into project. Same thing with the height map, I'll drag it in. Oh, I have to drag it into here it seems. Um, texture, sure. Why not? Import. So if I was to drag this height into height map here, you see that subtle change? Do you see that? So if I turn this off, turn it back on now with the normal here we go and even more so what we can do now is like scale it oh my gosh that's pretty intense but you guys can definitely see there is um oh maybe if i turn up the roughness because it's super shiny right now we don't want it too shiny so for example we can work with this make it bigger by a little bit there we go zoom out could even do something like this there we go pretty cool texture and actually just made by Illustrator and Photoshop so you guys could really create your own textures and then put it in here yourself now I'm actually gonna delete that we don't need that and let me just think another thing you guys can do I believe is just click on this paint layer here I drag it to the top and I believe if I just go like this, you can just paint straight on it. Base color, let's make it like a red. You can literally doodle, which I love. And I do quite a lot actually. It's one of my main techniques on here. Now, depending on your alpha brush, you can literally print anything on this, which is really cool. You could print patterns. Let's have another look. What is this? You can print this. And I really recommend just having a lot of fun because Substance Painter is fun. <laughs> really, you can, I mean, you can drag it, make a mess like that. I think they've got effects. If we go into effects, things like claws, okay. You know, they've got stuff like that. So you can really mess about in this program. Uh, fingerprints. They've got flowers. Let's actually choose one of the flowers. And I actually, th the reason why I say I use this a lot when I color things in is also because I import my own vectors into Substance Painter. So I usually create my own black and white mask in Illustrator, in whatever it is, whether it's a graphic, whether it's an illustration. I import that into Illustrator, fix it up, clean it up, and then I bring it into Substance Painter. So let me just show you an example of one that I did. Here it is. If I print this, let's go to the back. Actually, so go to the back, let's go here. Boom, this is actually something I drew on my tablet and I really wanted to just have something that is more customized, you know? Which is why a lot of my textures include my own drawings. Let's see, do I have any graphics? I'm pretty sure I have my logo somewhere. 
No? Do I need to import it in? I thought I would. Let's import one in, shall we? Let me press X from this. For example, if actually no, I need to so I need to show you guys to see it. Here is the logo, right? So you can see black is for anything you don't want to be seen, and white is the part you want to be seen. So this is working more like an opacity map. So if you guys want to start making your own, it's very easy. Very easy. Now I'm just gonna drag this into this section here. We want it as an alpha because it is going to be an alpha. I'm going to import it into my library. Import. We're going to find it now. Well, it's here. You can technically drag it in, but I'm going to try and search it up. There we go. And I'm going to stamp it just like that. Oh my god. Okay. Do you guys see how it's warped? Do you see how the T and E is stretched? Like from this perspective, it looks great. From this perspective, it's like, what what happened? What has happened? So um, another thing I can teach you guys is this is on tangent wrap. If you don't want it to distort, you go to UV, change it to UV, alignment, UV, and then stamp it. Now what this will do, if I zoom in to the 2D map, you can see this one is distorted and this one is not. This is because on a UV map, which is this side, it will always keep it flat. It won't distort it. Okay, no matter. No matter where you go. Okay, but if I were to change it to, we tried wrap, let's try planar. Let me check on the other side. You can see it's still warped. Now, of course, these have different use cases, but I find especially when I'm trying to put a graphic, uh, sorry, when I'm trying to put a graphic onto a organic shape or model, I find that working with UV tends to be the best. Okay, and the last thing I want to show you guys, let me switch back to, let's switch to a different texture actually. So I'm gonna minus this in the space bar here. Let's change it to a pattern. Do they have patterns here? I guess not. Let's go back to this cloud texture that I've got here. Um, actually, no, we'll turn this layer off. Right, another thing I like to do is actually get a fill. Fill layer. Actually, you know what? We won't use a fill layer. We'll actually use one of these preset um, fabrics here. Let's grab one of these tech fabric. Okay, here we go. We can always scale it a little bit down. Let's look at a bit big. Oh, the detail's nearly gone. We can bump it up. Okay, maybe a bit more. There we go. So what we can do is choose a bitmap mask and I'm gonna choose this cloud. Now what that means, okay, let me show you. We wanna go to fill and bring the tiling down let's see here we go what it does is almost like tie all these patterns into like just like tileable patterns i suppose it kind of replicates it so you can see that there right i use this for if i want if i've got a tileable pattern i tend to put it on like this but since this cloud isn't a tileable pattern it's just looking like this but you guys can see it, right? I also wonder what happens if I invert this. Let me see. If I right click, did I have an invert? Invert mask. Yes. Very similar to Photoshop. But as you guys can see what it does here, if I were to click on fill, you can make it bigger. You can actually offset it as well. You can move it up and down, you can rotate it, it's great. So there's like, I suppose one of the ways I would use this is for like tileable patterns. If you want something to like repeat again and again and again, this is really good for that. However, if I copy this, so I'm gonna press Control C, Control V, there we go, turn this one off. 
I'm going to right click on the mask section, clear mask, get rid of it. What I want to do is add a black mask and this time I want to have a circle. I don't know, something like this. And what and what I'm going to do is just draw like this. So I know I mentioned before that you could actually just click on paint and you could you could do similar thing. But what's really nice about I suppose let me turn this off this paint section is that it works exactly like the mask in Photoshop. So anything that is white, you can see it's white here, right? Anything that's white will be seen. Anything that is black, and if I press X on my keyboard, it changes it to black. You can rub it away. You can rub it away. If I, for example, let's actually delete this. That was the black mask. If I clear this mask, or if I can remove it, actually remove mask. If I were to choose white mask instead, you could do the opposite. So it's really up to you and you can start layering many, many fabrics on top of each other. So if I grab that denim, oh no, it's not denim, synthetic fabric to a weave. Tile it down. If I put this underneath, well, this is where the magic comes. And for example, what I like to do is if you don't like this, this pattern that is added on, you can take off the height. You see what it's done there? Okay. Or if you do like, I suppose, if you do like that pattern that I had a moment ago, if I turn on the heights, if you do like this sort of pattern, but you only want it in the blue section, that's where masking comes really handy. So I'm going to copy this mask here. I'm going to copy mask. Right click, we're going to paste it, paste it into mask. And now we're going to invert it. Right click, invert it. Okay. So now if I go to this blue section and I turn on height, now it only affects this blue section. And this is where it gets super powerful. It does get super powerful. So let's see. Yeah. I mean, um, the world is your oyster in this program. This is why I love it so much. You know, something crazy like that. So it depends on what your design is. One last tip I will give you guys before we actually start texturing this for real, for real, for real, because we are just introducing what you can do in this program. Um, let's see. Let's say I wanted to have a silver, a silver, ooh, this looks nice. A silver material. Now, I want to change this into a black mask and i want it to only go on if i zoom out here we go i want a silver line here a straight silver line so i used to do this at the beginning i used to just drag it and it would just look hella like messy it will look like i did not use a ruler do you know what i mean so there's two ways of fixing this one of the first ways is to left click and hold shift and you'll be able to paint in a straight line, just like that. Okay, it's not perfect, but you guys can see. If you hold it straight, especially on the UV section, you can see it paints in a straight line. And another thing I would suggest also, especially if you guys are interested in sketching, like if I draw like this, it's quite bumpy, right? And what I recommend you guys do is if you want it to be a nice smooth curve, you just click on this, uh, what would you even call this? What are you called? I'm sure there's a name, lazy mouse. Okay, lazy mouse because we're lazy, right? We want it to look nice and smooth. So it was on eight before, try 0.71, try. See if you like it because the higher the number, the less control you have, it will, it will kind of take over. So. Let's try, for example, free. Kind of, let's try again. There we go. So you see how it looks less jagged and it looks a lot smoother. So of course the higher the number, the harder it is to control, but it will be a lot smoother in terms of the curves. 
Okay, so we have this texture here. Okay, this is not, definitely not gonna be the final. So, okay, one more thing I wanna show you guys before we start getting serious, cause we're just playing about right now. Um, if you click here, these are display settings. What do we have here? Shader settings. So if we go to display settings, you can choose to turn the environment opacity up. You can really see it. You can choose the environment map, which half of it's been cut off by the screen, but I'm sure you guys can see the options here. So if I were to choose this to like this instead, and I'm sure you can rotate it. There we go. You can rotate it. So this is really good for just visualizing what you want to see. Studio. Yep. And then what do shadows do? Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, if we go here, you can change the AO intensity, for example. Just a few things you can change. We'll put that back. But uh, let's see, what environment should we have it in? We could have it in Canopus. That's a warm colored one. Bonifacio Street. Bonifacio Street. I wonder if you can import your own. Ooh, studios. Studio 80s horror. Okay. Glazed patio. Of course, you can play with the exposure. Environment blur. In case you don't want to see the environment and of course you can also just turn this off so we could choose this one for example and we can turn the opacity off I can also try and rotate this there we go I like seeing some shadows in like the parts that wrinkle a little bit it helps me visualize what I could potentially do in cinema 4d because that is where we will be rendering it Okay, so let's for example click this, give it some texture, and actually let me uh, control set that. Let me put a smart texture so you guys can see. If I were to add steel paint, now what do we do? Just because we've baked it, it will it will actually put the edges, or it will know where the edges are and where, at, where it will see the curvature, I suppose, the edge, it will add that kind of roughness, that silvery part to it, which I think is pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. I've got, of course you guys can tweak it. Uh, let me turn this display option off. You can open a folder, you can see they've got a lot going here. You can change each and every, every part in there to um, suit your fancy, really. So we got dirt, maybe that's the main color, you can change it, there we go. So you can tweak it in there, really, you can tweak it, there. Go wild, go crazy, it's digital, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be, I suppose, real, real realistic. That's the fun thing about digital, you can really just push the limits with the textures. And that's what I have a lot of fun doing as well. So what we're going to do now is go to top front. Okay, let's get rid of all of these. Let's actually, let's actually texture this for real, for real. Okay. I will see you guys in the next section where we will texture this. That is it for part two. And I hope you guys have found it helpful. Hopefully it should get you guys started within Substance Painter. We are now ready to head into part three where we actually start texturing this piece properly. And I will show you guys how I use my custom mask to create my own patterns and textures.